Hi, my name is John. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Some of y'all may have seen the viral video of my political sign being set ablaze. I want to give you a quick update and let you know why this matters. Here you see my sign, which I've replaced. The American flag is right above it, as it properly should be of any political sign. Then you see some big trees that cascade back to my house. I want you to look real closely here. You see the charred remnants of the signs that were burned by this arsonist. Now, something he didn't know that I'm mighty grateful for is that I framed this in steel. For not that, there's no telling whether or not what here are charred burn marks would not have been nothing left with these trees on fire my house on fire with my young family inside this is not okay in america i don't care who you support politically none of us can accept a country where someone can be so triggered by someone's support of a majority party political candidate that they come and commit premeditated arson on their home, really an attempt to kill them. It's not a stretch, folks, that that fire goes from that tree to that tree to my house. I have three young children. They sleep upstairs. I hate to think what what could be going on today as a result of this crazed maniac's actions. This should motivate every single one of us to say enough is enough. We can't live in a country that allows this. There must be an equal, equal, equal application of the law. And I trust that the Wake County District Attorney will do that. This is important. We can't go through another political cycle where this is allowed to be done. All right, guys. So we got to follow up on the story that I did a couple of days ago about the deranged liberal who decided to set on fire a Trump sign outside of a man's home. Now, this guy has been identified because the internet does what the internet does when stuff like this happens. And they have identified the man who allegedly committed this act of hate right and i'm calling the act of hate <laughs> because if the sign was any other sign like for example a blm sign or a pride flag or a pride sign or whatever people would be saying that is hate okay i think it's a act of hate is also an act of vandalism and arson now if you guys haven't seen the video i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the video so that you guys know exactly what i'm talking about take a look Yeah, so this guy went on this deranged attack <laughs> against his sign on at least three separate occasions. Now, a couple times, it seems like he burned the sign, which in my opinion is extremely dangerous. I mean, we could have had a climate change event happen uh, because of that, right? Him setting 
that sign on fire could have caused some climate change, okay, and could have potentially set the neighborhood on fire, okay, could have set the guy's house on fire who owned that Trump sign. Again, clearly this guy has disregard for not only people's signs and their political opinions and their freedom of speech, but also their livelihoods, okay, because he set that sign on fire and then he ran away like a coward and just let it burn, not knowing whether or not it would stop burning or would, you know, something else burn in the process? Would that flag get caught on fire? Again, totally reckless, okay? And it could have been a lot worse than what it was. Thank God that it wasn't. So with that being said, again, this guy has been identified and nobody should be surprised that he is a Democrat and uh, he kind of snitched on himself, okay? Because uh, the internet had help finding out who this guy is and also piecing together the evidence that he, in fact, did do it, okay? There's a little bit of self-snitching going on here. So let's go ahead and uh, and read about this because, again, this is kind of hilarious how this guy got caught. What do a Russian submarine commander, personnel at secret U.S. military bases, and a Raleigh anti-Trump arsonist have in common? They all share a little too much data on the popular app Strava, which allows users to share GPS logs of their running or cycling route. In this case, an individual from California was able to claim the reward for identifying the cyclist who set fire to a Trump one sign at a Raleigh home as the arsonist uploaded his rides from the three days he had been caught on video kicking and setting the sign on fire. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, what's up with all these people self-snitching, right? Again, it's just so funny, okay? This dude thought that he was going to get away with it. <laughs> First and foremost, he got caught on camera doing it. And then on top of that, he uploaded information about his cycling, okay? His route that he rides that is basically evidence or more evidence that he did do it, okay? Again, these people are just not very smart. And again, that that is what led to him getting identified. Uh, James Jim White Jr., a registered Democrat, uploaded three bicycle rides to his Strava account, which he had taken on August 12th, August 15th, and August 18th, the three dates that the arsonist was caught on video vandalizing the Trump sign. The GPS data White uploaded for, for these rods show that he had passed by the location of the arson. Okay, so you're going to commit a crime. First of all, you got caught on video, but you're going to commit a crime while you're riding your bike, and then you're going to upload it to an account that can be seen publicly. <laughs> Again, these Democrats just aren't very smart, but this is what happens when you have hate in your heart. When you have hate in your heart, uh, that kind of clouds your judgment, okay? It, it, you, when you're thinking with your emotions, you get so emotional, y'all here kicking a Trump sign because you can't stand Trump, like that does anything at all. And you're burning on fire, stuff like that. Yeah, it clouds your judgment, okay? I mean, this guy went and basically posted evidence of him committing the crime on his Strava account, which is going to be used by police to essentially charge him, okay? And he's definitely going to be found guilty because... Again, he was caught on video and he posted about it on his Strava, right? In terms of his, his route that he rides, okay? He posted his location. Again, just an idiot. Internet sleuths were able to follow up by finding images of white matching the distinctive arm tattoos, helmet, and bicycle that was captured in the video of the arsonist. Okay, so also on top of that, uh, this man's account, I guess, has pictures of the tattoos that match Okay, these tattoos match uh, the tattoos seen in the video. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what this tattoo is. But again, all this stuff is is matching. Okay, and he uploaded these pictures to the internet. And that's how the dude got identified. Right? He self-snitched. Okay, he self-snitched. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see it. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> right. That That's it right there. Okay, what an idiot. What an idiot. John Cain, the son's owner, issued a statement on X, the app formerly known as Twitter, regarding the identification. A gentleman from Lottie, California, who does not want his name made public, first identified the arsonist Jim White, emailing Jay Lawrence, nc at 
uh, 1 52 a.m. with Jim's Strava profile and GPS timestamp maps of Jim rides that correspond with the timestamps on the videos. Wow, that's super smart, right? It's super smart. I mean, this guy apparently knew that the guy had a Strava or thought that he may have had a Strava because he cycles, right? Which is apparently, you know, something that cyclists do. And he searched <laughs> Strava to find it, okay? Which is, again, is pretty genius, right? Pretty genius. So it seems, quote, I sent him 1000 as promised a few minutes ago and will be sharing his information with Tim Cass and Benny Johnson so that they can do the same. I am truly grateful to each of you for lending your audience and money to catching this arsonist. I have been asked why I put up the sign that is effectively putting a target on your back for the radical leftist. The answer is embody in an Alexander showing Henskin, quote, quote, the simple step of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. Since Kane announced that White had been named as the arsonist, White Strava account was set to private. Again, this guy's an idiot, right? He's an idiot for having it public in the first place, especially if you're going on routes and recording them and, you know, committing acts like this, right, of arson. Uh, Kane also told this week in the Triangle that the evidence had been passed along to the police who had been assigned to investigate the police reports he had already filed in regards to the arson incidents. Yeah, so again, uh, I hope that the police uh, arrest this individual and charge him to the fullest extent of the law because that is a crime. And um, yeah, I mean, the only thing I got to say is that, look, man, um, this reminds me of the story where you had a Democrat who had keyed the Trump supporter's car, okay, or the guy that had a sign on his car that was basically like anti-Biden or something, and a Democrat keyed the car. Again, there's so many stories about Democrats just not being able to stomach the fact that you live in a country with people who disagree with them politically, okay? And then they go and they commit these acts of violence, but yet they claim to be the party of unity and how the people who are violent in this country are the so-called white supremacists on the right when that's just simply not the case, okay? Th these liberals always resort to violence when they don't get their way okay they resort to violence over speech right as you can see here they resort to violence where they don't get their way when it comes to elections look at what happened after trump was elected there was violence all over the place there was violence uh when the supreme court overturned roe v wade right they, they always resort to violence when they can't get their way okay i mean these individuals uh they seem to have a a problem with being able to handle living in a country with people who disagree with them politically. I think we need to talk about it. I think there should be a bigger conversation in the mainstream liberal media about all the violence coming from the left, okay? Because I think that's where a vast majority of the political violence comes from. So anyways, yeah, uh, this story, uh, again, is a happy ending story. I hope that the guy gets arrested, charged to the full extent of the law, and I'm sure it won't be the last time that we hear a story about a deranged liberal committing an act uh, like this, whether it be vandalism, arson, violence, uh, just because they can't stand somebody else's political opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.